Hello and welcome to a brand new series. I'm your host, B.R. Brainerd, and let me tell you, it is good to be back. Some of my regular fans might be looking at this and wondering if my channel is going to become another typical Minecraft channel, and the answer is no. I'm still going to play other games, but I've played and I have loved Minecraft for many years, and I've just been dying to film it. The world you're looking at was created with the seed BR Brainerd, with Biomes of Plenty enabled on the TPPI mod pack, and I've added a little bit to it, as you can see. This is called Persona Island, designed by the great Aurelian Sama, and I thought it would be a wonderful location for us to start in. You can find a link to Aurelian's original world save in the description, as well as a link to my combined world save if you'd like to play along. Alright, let's not waste any more time. It's important to keep in mind that Minecraft is at its hardest right at the beginning. The first day is a race, not only to survive, but to have something constructive to do during the first evening. That's what this guide is for. If you looked carefully at the opening flyby, you'll have noticed that we're next to a couple of villages. If you spawn next to one in your own world, you're home free. So we're going to pretend that this is a worst case scenario and that those villages aren't there. They're both right on the other side of the river behind that cliff. There aren't any caves nearby that I can see, so we're going to start as usual by punching a tree. This one looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and Bruce Lee this entire tree, and that's going to give us enough materials to build our starting tools. Alright, so that's the first tree out of the way. We've got five logs, which should be more than enough for our starting tools. We're just going to make a few wooden planks, and then a few more wooden sticks to go with it. And then after that, we're going to build ourselves a crafting table. Standard stuff for any of you who've played Minecraft. Now we could also make a crafting station from Tinkerer's Construct. Same as the crafting table, except it doesn't dump out items onto the ground. However, instead we're going to add a stick and make a pocket crafting table. From the mod factorization, this is a really useful item. What this is going to let us do is it's going to let us craft right from our inventory, which means we won't have to run back and forth from a stationary crafting table, and that's going to save us both time and food, both of which are in short supply right now. So if we just press C, as you can see, that'll open up our inventory. I'm going to start by building a wooden shovel and a wooden pick. The shovel is worth it since you usually have to dig through dirt to get at the stone underneath. That cobblestone is something we need badly right now, probably for the last time in our career. But we're also going to go ahead and build a wooden pick, and we're going to head around to the underside of this hill because I believe I saw some low-hanging stone there. It's not about getting ore at this point. If we wanted that, we'd go deeper, but until we're safe, we need to actually just get the cobblestone so that we can immediately build a stone pick. We need the improved speed of stone tools quick. So we're just going to grab a few more pieces. We don't need to use up the whole wooden pick. We can actually burn it for fuel later on. And we've got six pieces. Okay, so that's enough to make one pick. We're going to go ahead and do that with our pocket crafting table. And now I'm going to finish off the rest of this stone right here, just so that we have enough to build a furnace and a couple of other tools that I'll need later on. So I will see you back after I'm done. Okay, so we're just going to grab these last two pieces here, and we should be all... Oh, we're going to go down and grab that. Okay. And now back to civilization. Now that's another common mistake that I see a lot of people making on the first night. If you're in a worst case scenario, maybe you don't know where the stone is or where a nearby cave is, just make sure you have trees nearby and possibly some long grass and that's it. Okay, we're going to need to make a few more sticks. And from this, we're going to use the cobblestone that we just picked up to make a couple of tools. Starting with a stone hoe, there we go, and a stone axe. And you know where this is going. Wood is hugely, hugely important, and what often happens is that people don't get enough of it on the first day, and they're stuck inside their house, really with nothing to do. Okay, it doesn't look like we're going to get any apples and saplings from there, so I'm actually going to head to the far side of the inlet and start clearing from left over to the right. And we won't necessarily get all of those trees, but we'll get enough of it to hopefully get a chance at an apple. And the reason I'm choosing this side of the inlet is because those scary dark areas that you see on the far side... A lot of monsters are going to be spawning in there. We want to pick a place where we're not going to constantly have to fight off waves of monsters that have aggroed us from the other side of the lake. So that's going to be the south side here, and that's where we're eventually going to build our garden. Now as I go around mining these trees, you can see I'm also just trying to dig up as much of the long grass as possible, and hopefully get enough seeds. Now this is one of the areas in which mods hurt you. They don't all make your life easier. And because there's so many mods in this pack that add new seeds, it's actually quite difficult to get your hands on wheat, for example, which is one of the best ones to actually just keep you alive in the beginning. As you can see, we're getting tomato seeds and all kinds of different stuff. 
So wow, look at all these different types of seeds. That filled up my inventory almost right away. We've barely been playing for a few minutes. I'm just going to throw some of these away. We might pick some of them up back later, but I want to make enough room to craft on the right. That's the sacrifice that you make for the pocket crafting table is you need that 3x3 three three area on the right. And we're going to make a furnace. We need this going quickly so that we can have enough charcoal by nightfall so that we can place down a bunch of torches. And that's probably the most important part. If you just cordon off a safe area with torches, you don't even need a house on the first night. But we're going to be fast enough that we're going to get one. We've got an apple now. Joy, that's actually a big deal. A single apple can make the difference between starvation and survival. This is going to be the place where we're going to build our garden, but we need a few pieces of dirt, so that's what our wooden shovel is for. And we're going to plant this dirt near the ice, and if we stick some torches near the ice, the ice will melt, irrigating the ground, and also allowing our seeds to continue to grow throughout the night because they'll have enough light, and Minecraft doesn't know the difference between torchlight and sunlight. For those of you who have experience playing on servers with your friends, you know that there's a decent chance that you'll start the game already at night, and that is just one of the worst things that can happen to a person. Worse than Nickelback reruns, worse than a grenade up the bum. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Let's go ahead and get this ground tilled. There we go. I placed down the torches in a little bit, but I just want to make sure that no further apples have dropped. We don't want to miss those. And we're going to check on the furnace. I just saw it turn off. We've got some charcoal. And we're going to use that as the fuel from now on. It is actually more efficient to turn some wood into charcoal and then immediately use that charcoal to make more charcoal. That might seem counterintuitive, but you'll actually burn through fewer logs that way. And so right now we're all about efficiency. And we've got our first few torches. So now that we have our torches from the charcoal in the furnace, we can actually light this area and get that ice melting so that we can get started on a fully irrigated garden. And I'm just going to light up. By pressing F7, you can see I've got this grid down, a very handy feature that lets you know where mobs can possibly spawn. Before this feature was available, it was very common for people to have dark spawning spots in the middle of their house. You'd get not-so-friendly house creepers, which would just want to hug and end up blowing up your storage chest, and that could really ruin your day. So I can tell that I'm going to need a little bit more wood, so I'll get right back with you after we've got it. Okay, we've got our wood, and that's the rest of our garden planted for now. Now, I have to admit, I haven't worked with some of these seeds before. Usually that long stalk in the middle means that it often needs a nearby piece of dirt to grow. So just in case, I've left a few extra spaces just to make sure that we get plenty of food. Okay, so let's go into our inventory here. We've got 29 wooden logs. We're going to turn most of that into wooden planks, which we're going to use as the foundation for our house. We're going to leave eight wooden logs behind, and we're going to turn those into charcoal so that we can make more torches. And the rest of the wooden planks, because it's so easy to uh, log a single wooden log and quadruple that into four wooden planks, it's a very good starting material to get the foundation of your house build in that early stage of the game where you're actually strapped for blocks of all things. Now pretty soon we'll have more cobblestone than we know what to do with, but we've got our wood cooking, making charcoal for more torches, and we're just going to run around in a circle like this and try and circle off an area, and this area is going to be effectively mob-proof. Not mob-proof, but mobs aren't going to spawn in a certain radius of our house which is going to give us a nice, comfortable distance. This is the most important part right here. It's getting an area that's safe from all of these torches. We don't even need to really build a house on the first night if we want to, for the most part, stand still. As long as our torch radius is long enough that monsters spawning outside it won't aggro us, we're home free. So as we're running around in a big circle like this, this is actually a lot of time to spend on the first night, but it's worth it because our garden is growing, so we know we're, gonna, we're not going to starve, we're going to have food, and we're just going to get this area safe while we get another few torches being made. And as you can see, Minecraft being the way that it is, you know, you can run through a stack of torches no problem. It's, it's kind of one of the problems with Minecraft, in my opinion, is that if you want to be safe in survival, you pretty much have to have a torch every few feet. And thankfully, there's a few modded items that we'll get into later that's actually going to fix the aesthetics of that, because it's a little ridiculous to me to have all of these torches all over the place. But it's way too early to be worrying about aesthetics right now. So this is most of it, and as you can see, we're working back towards our center point in the furnace. And so we've got a fairly safe area right now. There's just a couple of patches that I need to clean up, especially around the garden, just in case I want to access this at night if we get into real trouble and start to starve. But because we haven't ranged a whole lot, and you know, we haven't mined a whole lot, we're still at full haunches at this point. 
So we're completely safe. We can mine the whole night and not have any food if that's what happened. You know, no apples or anything. We can mine the whole night and then come back upstairs and have wheat ready and have a long, productive evening. So now that the uh, the furnace is finished, there's an area there that we need to light up. And as we can see, it's starting to get dark, and we've just barely finished creating our safe area. So this is an example of how much that you can do on the first night. You can get a garden. You can get a house started. You can get torches. You can get a safe area, even if you don't spawn next to a cave or a village. So we just have to make sure now we've got plenty of cobble. We've got ourselves a furnace, plenty of wood, enough to build a house with. So we're going to start with that, and again, aesthetics don't matter. So sand is actually affected by gravity, so I'm just going to use up all of the sand that I picked up on the base. And because we planned ahead, we can actually make our starting house kind of large. Let's see, our garden is that way, so I actually want the front door to be facing the garden, and just in case we need to run back between those two places. So we're going to expand the foundation of the house a little bit. I think that should just be enough. And this probably beats a lot of the starting houses that I know I've been forced to live in before. Just three by three dirt hovels, you know, huddled together during the first night, hoping that the monsters outside don't kill us. And uh, we just need these walls of our house to be two blocks high. That way zombie skeletons and the like won't be able to get past it. They can jump up one block, but not two. And with a two block high wall, we're safe from almost everything in vanilla. Okay, that's the walls done. Now we're very low on torches and there's a few dark spots here, so you have to remember to cover the roof as well. I see a bunch of players forgetting this. They build a roof on their house and a bunch of monsters spawn on it, and so as soon as they go out the front door after the end of the first night, a bunch of zombies on fire just maraud them and they I see a lot of players die that way. So we're actually going to avoid building a roof for the most part, and instead I'm going to show you a neat door. We're going to build a fence gate. It costs two planks of wood, that might seem like a luxury item, and we're going to build a pressure plate to go with it. And check this out, this is really cool. We put a pressure plate on the ground, and then above it a fence gate. This is one of my favorite tricks for early Minecraft. Now, if you just run right at this, it will open up for you. And as you can see, it barely slows us down. It'll do it a little bit more sometimes on a server. Um, but it opens automatically without you having to right-click. It'll close behind you critically without having to right-click. So if there's zombies on your tail, you don't have to spin the, the around and close the door in their face. It'll close automatically and you'll be safe right away. You just run at the door. And zombies and monsters consider that fence gate to be a solid wall. So you might think that the wooden pressure plate on the ground is insecure. It's not. Um, it is possible for monsters to get through it, but it's very rare. And unlike a wooden door, zombies can't break through it. So I love that thing, I really do. Another trick, probably the final one for the night. We're going to press B to balance our wood, and we're going to convert the rest of it into wooden slabs, which again further increases the amount that we're going to get. And we're going to start adding uh, wooden slabs around the side like this. Remember that I said you're safe from almost everything in vanilla. The one exception with the two block high is spiders. They will smack right into the walls and then immediately start climbing up them as they're tracking you. So we don't want spiders to get into our hair. So what if we place these slabs down, spiders will rise up and they'll bonk their heads against the wooden slabs. And now we're going to be safe from everything in vanilla. We didn't have quite enough blocks for this section here, but that's okay. We created a wide enough safe radius that, truth be told, we don't even need a stone sword. Traditionally, that would be the next thing that I would build right now. Get a stone sword, be safe, because the difference between punching and slashing is huge. I think to kill a zombie, it's about five hits with a stone sword. And instead, we get to focus on mining. So we're going to start the mine right in our little safe zone right here and just start digging down. And that's what we're just going to spend the rest of the night doing. Now, I did mention that we're safe from everything in vanilla without a roof and a little overhang like that. There are flying monsters added by some of the mods, like wisps, for example. And if you see any of those, you're going to have to change your strategy. But... Um, to my knowledge, it's quite rare for wisps to spawn without an appreciable amount of taint. So for the most part, we're safe from that. But as we dig down further, we're going to start get needing more torches. And so critically, I don't have that just yet. But it's okay. We've got a safe zone and we've got saplings. We've got some more charcoal in the furnace already that we got from before. And all we need is just a little bit more wood and we'll be able to get more torches than the six that we've got on us. So no problem. We can replant some of those saplings and I'm going to replant them next to some of the torches we have outside, and that serves a kind of dual purpose. It helps our trees grow faster, because once again, Minecraft doesn't know the difference between sunlight and torchlight for the most part, 
and also it will prevent zombies from spawning underneath those trees, which is a big deal because if they spawn nearby, the AI is smart enough to use the planted trees for cover, and then you've got maybe skeletons, for example, shooting you at a distance from the safety underneath a tree, and you have to clear them out every morning. So, for example, if you spawn in a forest, uh, you have to be careful about where you plant your trees. One thing I didn't mention before, before we wrap up, is that you definitely want to take note of any nearby animals. Cows will provide you with a good early source of food. Even if you have to eat the beef raw, it's not going to poison you in Minecraft. And it'll give you leather, which can be a decent source of early game equipment. So murderize any cows you see. If you see sheep, you're in. That's tremendous luck seeing sheep near where you first start. But take notice of how many there are. If there are three or more, kill them, take their wool, build a bed. It's a huge boondoggle to have a bed on the first night. You skip the hardest part of the game right away. But as you can see, this is a worst case scenario on this island, and there are no cows and no sheep of any kind. If there are two or less, just leave the sheep there, because it's not going to be long until you get yourself a pair of shears. Well, that's it, gamers and gamettes. I'm going to spend the rest of the evening digging out our first mine. We'll have plenty to do and plenty to talk about how to mine in TPPI, as well as getting into the first bit of what is special about this mod pack. We're probably also going to take a look, if we have time, into thermal expansion and some of the early machines that are part of this mod pack. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wow, what is up with my skin? I kind of look like a villager, except completely screwed up. Look at that. Part of my skin is invisible. Did my account get hacked? I better check the Moyang website. Oh, let's see. The long-nosed villagers introduced in Minecraft Beta 1.9 have become sentient. They have taken over our skin servers. So what's today's date? April the 1st. Uh-huh. Yeah, real cute, guys.